This former UFC light heavyweight champ is widely considered one of the greatest mixed martial artists of all time. However, despite his impressive skills in the octagon, John Jones has had his fair share of embarrassing career moments, from getting five tickets in a single traffic stop to testing positive for cocaine after a fight. Here are some of John Jones's most embarrassing moments. Let's paint the picture. Jones had just returned from a year-long layoff. He was driving in Albuquerque one night and ended up getting pulled over. Okay, maybe driving is a generous term. Let's call it what it was. Jones was enjoying a drag race. Unfortunately, he was still on probation, and that wasn't the only thing against him that night. The officer that pulled him over was definitely not a fan. The arrest footage showed them bickering and trading insults. Yeah, definitely not a good look for either of the parties. Jones ended up being ticketed for drag racing, using a modified exhaust, having an ineligible license plate, being unable to maintain a traffic lane, and also exhibition driving. Kind of sounds like the guy was auditioning for the next Fast and Furious film. A black man can't drink? And getting elected to the Hall of Fame, and now this is what I got? You While the charges were definitely excessive, Jones was worrying about the ticket having an impact on his probation. Fans were also concerned that his return to the Octagon might end up being cancelled, and that he might find his way behind bars once again, forcing the UFC to launch its own investigation into the matter. Still, Jones was confident that the incident wouldn't affect his probation. Moving on from legal troubles though, let's talk about something a bit more fitting to his profession, post-fight injuries. Jones and his coach had a pretty unusual bonding experience after his win against Alexander Gustafsson. Despite not having the same level of recognition as some of Jones' previous opponents, such as Chael Sonnen, Rampage Jackson, Shogun Rua, and Vitor Belfort, who are all legends of the promotion, Gustafsson looked to be the biggest threat of all of them that night. It was an epic war between two of the best young light heavyweights in the world. The champion was bloodied and battered in a way no one had ever seen before. Many thought that he'd actually won the fight itself. It was this very thrashing that led Jones to a moment that I'm sure he desperately wishes to forget. In an interview sometime after the fight, Jones revealed that his arms had been so swollen and bruised that he wouldn't be able to bend them to wipe his own butt and needed one of his coaches to step in and do it for him. I don't want to imagine myself in that position. Though I'm sure that Jones would agree that it was a situation all around. Jones nearly the dub that night, but he's never managed to finish an opponent ever since, showing just how much of a toll it's had on his body. However, that beating might not have been the only thing that had a lasting effect on him, as he's also failed a couple of drug tests over the course of his career, such as the time he's tested positive for cocaine metabolites before his match at UFC 182 against Daniel Cormier. The results of the test hadn't been revealed until days after the fight had already happened, showing the world just how immature he was. I don't think I need to explain why sniffing coke right before a major fight is a bad idea, do I? It was hard to believe that he'd be slow enough to do something like that. But to make matters worse, he was sent to rehab after the results were made public, and he stayed in the facility for only a single day, proving that he didn't care about his drug issues and only did it for PR purposes, since he knew that he was going to test positive in the first place. You're like a crackhead with a suit on. I could look like a crackhead with a suit on, but I've never been a crackhead like you though. <laughs> so you can say I look like one, but I've never been one. I've never been one. But that's far from the only time Jones had been in the same situation, as he also failed his drug test for the UFC 200 event. This one was just sad to see as the champ was in the middle of making a remarkable comeback, and his fans were all rooting for him. To make matters worse, he claimed that he was completely sober, and that he was a changed man, hell-bent on a mission to reclaim his championship title. However, just three days before his headline matchup against Daniel Cormier, the USADA pulled Jones from the event because of an alleged anti-doping infraction. It was later revealed that he had tested positive for two different kinds of estrogen blockers, which once again put a black cloud on Jones's fighting career. 
the greatest of all time, now had his entire legacy under question, not to mention that it cost him an eight-figure payday. Still, it's important to state that Jones announced that he hadn't knowingly taken any PEDs, claiming that he'd used an off-brand sex pill from Thailand without knowing that it contained steroids. I was told that, you know, if you ever feel the need, then getting an actual prescription to like a Cialis would be the best idea and to never ever take anything. Which seems like an even worse excuse. But of course, this wasn't the only time in the fighter's career that he had had a headline fight canceled. However, this time around, it wasn't entirely his fault, as UFC 151 was meant to be a battle between Jones and Dan Henderson. But Henderson was unfortunately forced to pull out due to an injury. And in his place, Shale Sonnen offered to step in and fight the champ on just eight days notice. But Jones, following his coach Greg Jackson's advice, refused to take the fight stating that they didn't have enough time to adjust to the change in opponents. However, instead of understanding his side of the story, Dana White, the UFC owner himself, threw him under the bus and blamed the cancellation of the event on Jones alone. Kind of a pathetic move, to be honest. But we all know what Dana's been up to these days. For the first time in Jones's life, he was the villain. He was portrayed as the coward, and both fans and fighters mocked him for not taking the fight. For once, I'm on Jones's side on this one. But that feeling doesn't last very long, as he proved his idiocy once again after driving intoxicated back in May 2012, following his win against Rashad Evans, and just becoming the first MMA fighter to be sponsored by Nike. He crashed his Bentley into a pole at 5 in the morning and was arrested on the scene. He was fortunate enough that no one was seriously injured, but still, this was the first time his image took a serious hit, shocking most people that he'd put himself in such a position, especially after such a major achievement. The car troubles don't end there, as Jones was involved in a hit and run just three years later, making what he considers the biggest mistake of his life. He crashed his rented Buick SUV into another car, driven by a pregnant woman, after running a red light and then fleeing the scene, only to return a short while later to grab a handful of cash from his car and then run away again. The victim suffered a broken arm, and police found a marijuana pipe in his car as well, causing the UFC to suspend Jones indefinitely and stripping him of the championship. He lost all of his endorsements and got sentenced to 18 months of probation. It truly was a life-changing event and the biggest wake-up call of his life. He claims to have been sober since then and vowed to make significant changes in his life. It was shocking to see a guy who once had the world in the palm of his hands do everything he could to try and throw it all away. But hey, that's all the time we have for Jones's antics. Hope to see you in the next video.